Hello and welcome to this tutorial, which is an introduction to TCP and UDP. Now in the OSI model video and the TCP IP model video, we mentioned a layer known as the transport layer. And the transport layer has two protocols associated with it, namely TCP and UDP. And the reason why we single these two out and talk about them in quite a lot of detail is because nearly every application that runs on a computer will use either TCP or UDP. So knowing how both of these work and the characteristics of each one is going to be very beneficial to you as you continue to study and definitely when you get out into the field and you're actually applying your knowledge. So we're going to go ahead and start by looking at some of the features of both UDP and TCP. Some are similar and some are very different. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to a topic known as multiplexing. Now this isn't necessarily a feature of both TCP and UDP, it's really just the way that both of them work. And they do this in the same way. And this is a really good first step into understanding how these two protocols work. Now we get into all of the details of TCP in a few separate videos because there's a lot of information to cover. UDP compared to TCP is relatively simple, so we're going to cover all of the important details here in this introduction about UDP. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. First up is TCP. Now TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and this is a Layer 4 protocol if you're talking about the OSI model, or it's a Transport Layer Protocol if you're talking about the TCP IP model. TCP has a couple features that we will get acquainted with in the next couple videos. The first one is TCP is a connection oriented protocol and what that means is before any data is transmitted between two devices a connection is established and the parameters of that connection are negotiated. TCP also uses a concept known as windowing and this is a, a form of flow control. In other words, by using this technique of windowing, two devices using TCP can control how information is sent between them, how much at any given time. If it needs to back off and perhaps send a little bit less, it can do that or it can go in the other direction and say, send more, things are going really well. So it's dynamic and it, and it controls the flow of how much data is actually sent at a given time. So that's windowing. The next feature is error recovery and this is why TCP is known as a reliable protocol because it can detect when packets are lost in transmission and it will go ahead and retransmit them. Finally, TCP is known for its ability to order data. So as data is sent between two devices, you know, on an IP network, no two packets necessarily have to take the same path. Well, that means that they can arrive at the destination out of order. Perhaps packet two will arrive before packet one. TCP has the ability to go ahead and order them back in their original sequence. Okay, so that's TCP. These are the features and we cover these features in detail in dedicated tutorials. Because like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of details we need to become familiar with and this is too much for one sitting. Alright, so let's go ahead now and with these in mind, these features and characteristics of TCP, let's go ahead and take a look at UDP. Now UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol and when you talk about the features of UDP you can almost talk about the lack of features of UDP especially when you compare it to TCP. So let's see what I mean by that. First, UDP is a connectionless protocol whereas TCP is a connection oriented. So a connectionless protocol means this protocol does not have to establish a connection before it can start sending data. Instead, it will just start sending the data, whereas TCP, it's polite. You can think of it that way. TCP will set up that connection first, negotiate it, and then when both sides are happy, it'll send data. UDP doesn't care about any of those formalities. It just sends the data. Okay, so that's a connectionless protocol, and UDP is a connectionless protocol. Now, UDP does not offer any sort of windowing. 
or flow control like TCP does. UDP does not offer any sort of error recovery like TCP does. And UDP does not care about the ordering of data, whereas TCP does. So why use UDP? Because it seems like TCP has all the great features. Well, quite simply, there are a lot of applications that just don't need all of the features of TCP. And if you think about all the features that TCP has compared to UDP, there, that, there's a lot more processing involved on the TCP side compared to UDP because it's doing a lot more work. So that means there's, a, there's less overhead on the UDP side. It's a, it's a lighter protocol. You can think of it that way. So some programs, some applications, let's say voice over IP, it actually cannot benefit by some of the features of TCP. I'll give you an example. When you send data, especially voice, across a network, it's very sensitive to being delayed or actually being dropped completely. Well, with UDP, that's fine. It just goes ahead and sends it as soon as it gets it. If you were using TCP, for an example, in a voice stream, and you started losing some of those packets, well, TCP would try to resend them. However, voice is so sensitive to delay, that TCP feature, that, that error recovery, would introduce some delay. Okay, so UDP is very good um, for certain applications, and TCP is really good for different applications. So really, it depends. Do you need the heavy feature set, or do you not need it? So the things in common with TCP and UDP are applications will choose one of them based on their needs. And that should be kind of obvious now, now that we looked at the features offered by each protocol. Also, both TCP and UDP have to use IP, the internet protocol, when it comes to actually delivering data across a network. Remember, the transport layer is above the network and the internet layer in the OSI and TCP IP model. And so these two protocols, they can't do their job on their own. They actually rely on the protocols below them. And the next one below them is IP. So keep that in mind. They don't work in a vacuum. They rely on the protocols below them to help them out. And finally, as I mentioned in the beginning, both TCP and UDP use a concept of multiplexing. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So let's talk about multiplexing in terms of the problem it has to solve. So we have PCA and PCB. And PCA is going to create a connection to PCB to access a website. So there's a web server running on PCB. And we're going to use the protocol HTTP to access it. So we have a communication going between the two PCs for a website. And then PCA is going to go ahead and transfer some files over to PCB. Let's say it uses FTP to do that. And now while these two connections are active, PCA is also going to use PCB as a DNS server in order to resolve some URLs for perhaps some different websites it wants to go to. So if we think about multiplexing, let's ask ourselves this question. PCB has these three connections all coming from PCA. How does it distinguish each one? And how does it send the data from the HTTP conversation to the right application? and at the same time keeping it separate from the data for the FTP connection and the DNS connection. Likewise, on the PCA side, how does it distinguish the data it receives from PCB? It'll get a response from the DNS server, and it'll also get the website it's requesting. So this is the problem we're, we're faced with, and multiplexing solve this, solves this problem for us. Well, let's look at this again with multiplexing in mind this time. So our first connection is an HTTP connection. And here we have the IP address and the port number used on each side. Now let's talk about port numbers. A port number is used to identify an application on a device. So here you can see the IP address of PCA 10.10.10.1 is now followed by a port number of 2000. 
And likewise, on the other side, the IP address of PCB, 192.168.50.5, is followed by a port number of 80. And so when these two PCs talk, when they communicate, they're using the port numbers to identify which application is responsible or interested in this data. They're also using each other's IP addresses. Now remember, an IP address is a, is a logical address which identifies a device somewhere out on the network. It's kind of like a postal address. And the IP address represents the address of a house on a street. And you can think of the port number as one of many people who might live in a house. So when a letter comes to a particular house or a particular IP address, the port number will identify which person in that house is interested in receiving this letter. Okay. Now this combination, the IP address and the port number, is known as a socket. So sockets are the combination of using a port and an IP address to identify a particular communication session. So here, PCA initiates a request and it sends it to PCB on port 80. When, port, when PCB replies, it will send that data back to port 2000 on PCA. So when PCA receives it, and it receives it on port 2000, it knows, oh, well, this is the session I have open with PCB. We're using HTTP. Great. I know what's happening. I know what to do with this information. So if we introduce the next conversation at the same time, this is our FTP session, we see the same thing, but we see different port numbers used. This time PCA is sourcing from a port of 3000 and it's sending it to port 21. And let's go ahead and put up the third conversation at the same time. This is our DNS session. PCA sources its um, packets from port 4000 and it sends them to port 53 on PCB. So anything that PCB receives on port 53, it knows it identifies the DNS application. Furthermore, the concept of sockets is useful because what if you had another PC here as well and it's going to use PCB for DNS too. So it'll send it to the same IP address because that's PCB's address 50.5 and to port 53. And let's say this IP address is 10.10.10.2 and it uses port 2000. Well, this request on the PCB side is going to look the same as this one, right? The same IP address and the same port number. However, when you look at the combination of both IP addresses and both ports used, you have a unique identifier for that entire session because our new session down here is actually using a different port, port 2000 and it has a different IP address. So when you take both of them, they are not the same as this conversation. So sockets and, and pairs of sockets between two different devices can uniquely identify a conversation. Now some of these ports use like 80, 21, and 53 are known as well-known ports or commonly used ports and they're reserved for specific applications. So anyone around the world running a, a website can use port 80 to identify that application and it will uh, accept connections sent to port 80 by anyone else in the world. So these are reserved ports and there are um, several of them that you need to be acquainted with. Here's a list of some of them. You can see we have the ports listed on the left hand side and in the middle column we have the protocol listed. So both TCP and UDP use the concept of ports and combine with IPs the concept of sockets.
on the right hand side here we've listed some of the applications that are associated with a particular port and a particular protocol. So you can see some applications choose TCP, some choose UDP, and some, like DNS, can use either one, depending on the type of conversation it's having. Okay, so this is multiplexing. This is the ability of TCP and UDP to take a lot of information from different applications and from different devices and to make sure it gets to the right destination within a PC. That's why you can have several different web browsers open at the same time talking to different websites. In, at the same time you can have a file transfer session going on and you could be streaming some video from yet another website. And it all happens properly because of multiplexing. All right, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that TCP is a connection-oriented protocol, and it has a lot of features. It's a very robust protocol, and make sure you check out the other videos on these features and some of those details. Now, UDP, on the other hand, is a connectionless protocol, and it's very lightweight. It's, it has not nearly as many features as TCP. And again, applications choose which one they want to use, TCP or UDP, to best suit their needs. However, both of these protocols use the idea of multiplexing. And multiplexing introduced the idea of a port. A port simply identifies an application on a device. And when you combine a port plus an IP address, those together equal a socket. And a socket can be used to identify a conversation between devices, especially if you have a socket at each end that provides a unique combination. Finally, we presented a list of some of the well-known ports, and you should familiar, familiarize yourself with those, those ports. Okay, so that's it. That is the introduction to TCP and UDP. Thanks for watching.